that I want to ask us is that it's a little cold in here. And as a Qigong instructor and as a practitioner, a fitness trainer, I would just encourage you that you need to do anything um, to make yourselves available to hear what, I, what I'm saying today. So if you need to rub your arms together, do a little knocking, a little shaking, if you need to stand up at all, anything that you need to do. If you, you know, this is our space. This is gonna be our space for the next 20 minutes or so. Um, I want you to feel comfortable. Um, if you feel like you need to lay down, you need to stand up, go to the sides, anything you can do to be able to receive uh, the message today. I welcome that. Get comfortable. So the theme is power, and the topic is, are you leaking power? So one of the th first things I think about with power is our capacity as humans. So let's take a look at people um, through the test of time that have claimed their own, you know, not say personal power, but have really received that power coming through them. So I always think of Gandhi and Mother Teresa. Um, I think of people that we know like Oprah. I mean, these, pe these individuals have really allowed this infinite source to come through them and express them uniquely as them. And then we have people um, that have used power on the other side of the continuum. But think about it, we all have access to this one source resourcing itself. So the first thing I want to ask us is, if the theme is, are we leaking power, I want us to go back to, how can we close up those leaks? How can we assess that? So again, I'll probably be talking a lot about Chinese medicine, if that's okay with you, and Taoism, because that's the lens that I um, view the world from. Um, but I love this idea um, of radical aliveness that Re Reverend Michael speaks about. Did you guys get to hear those words from the spiritual liberation? Wow super powerful, that there's no real personal power that it's perceived, that there's only this one power operating through us, um, resourcing. And so think about this idea of being alive, being awakened. And what Howard Thurman says is that the world needs you to be in touch with your passions. That's what the world needs. Not just the shoulds, the woulds, not trying to be someone else because they're taken, right? So. There's this, there's this energy behind the word of radical, aliveness. This, even last week's topic, Great Awakening, there's energy behind those words. You know, I think about um, the clothes that we put on. How does that make you feel, right? It makes a big difference. When I'm not feeling that great, I'm gonna put big sweatpants on and a big Santa Cruz hoodie, and, you know, it's gonna be a little bit different. So everything that we do think, feel, around us contributes to how we feel. Most of us live our life from where? The emotional state. We know this, right? So if our emotions are our operating system, the software or the hardware, are we gonna believe everything we feel, everything we think? So, for me, to be in touch with this power, this life force that moving through us, you know, in Chinese medicine, we believe that the energy from the earth is coming through us, because you know we're a connection between heaven and earth. So the energy is gonna come from in the earth, up our body, and out. But what happens as humans? We start thinking. It's the, it's the part of us, what part of us gets in the way, and then we get into cyclical thinking. And what's happening is it's stopping that flow. It's stopping that you know, limitless connection. We are getting in the way, but it's our thoughts, or maybe our ego. So I always ask ourselves, what part of me is getting in the way and allowing these leaks to happen? Is it the seven-year-old self that you know, got hurt on the playground? Is it the part of myself where you know, my dad really wants me to succeed, so it's that part of myself? So asking yourself, you know, how do I connect all parts and hold and heal the places that I do feel disconnected? You know, Rev D always talks about that the only um, thing that we need to heal is the sense of separation. Well, let's take that to the micro within this body temple. So. Yeah, I, I, you know, in Chinese medicine, it's one of those things where, you know, we either are blocking or leaking. 
We are going to talk about leaking today, but nothing's in the particular. So if, if I'm going to talk about chi and energy, blocking or leaking, it's very similar with money, with love, with resources, with time. That's what's so amazing about it. Nothing is in the particular. So when you connect with this power, you know, as Re Reverend Michael just spoke, um, the radical um, aliveness is infectious. It's infectious. I can feel it. So if there's no real power without spiritual power, and that power comes through you, and you are connected to the source of all things, spirituality is just like a muscle, right? It has to be fueled. So the thing that I do in Taoism is that I immerse myself in nature. You know, you know when to take a hot bath. You know when you need girlfriend night out. Right? You know when you need to fill yourself up with that sunrise that we're so blessed in this county to have. But sometimes what happens? That lactic acid builds up. You know when you start to work out? Same with our spirituality, like a muscle. Sometimes that growth, that stretch, ugh, doesn't feel good. But what do you have to do? Just like when you start working out, you gotta keep moving. Because Chinese medicine, if you get stuck, the stagnation is just as uh, worse as the leaks. Very simple. We kind of complicate things, don't we? <laughs> things are very simple. So if we were to define power, I just want to remind us that what is it? Well, we know it's the ability to act or produce an effect. It's physical might. Um, it's mental or moral e efficacy. So it's your mental efficiency, your potency. Um, it's also a source of means of supplying energy, so like electricity. And it's also magnification. So you know in the spirit animal deck what represents power? Horse. So those phrases that weave into our current society like, I gotta get back on the horse or back in the saddle. I mean, even our cars are still um, run by horsepower. How much horsepower can I get, right? We want horsepower. We want our own power to get somewhere. I'm grateful of the horses and the cars because I can get there to where I want to go, to get closer to the source. That's what we want. I think about our cell phone. Part of Chinese medicine for me is about assisting people to get connected with themselves. But it's not really themselves. It's really being empty. So they're just an empty conduit. And what the artist of being is, how do you, how does it move through you and uniquely express you? That's what's so amazing about being in each other's lives for long term. You get to witness that. It's not about just being happy. Our job, if we were to have a job of being, is to be all of it, every emotion. So radical aliveness, like you were talking about, is not to just be one emotional state. It's being dynamic. So. I, um, I just lost my train of thought. But, so when I, <laughs> so when you, the way the animals are is that when you spot an animal, it means something. So when you see a horse, um, it means that you might be seeping or leaking your power or it just reminds you about how powerful you are. So when you get a phone call, it's like you decide, do I want to answer that, this person? Do I want to talk to this person? No. Decline or accept. That's very similar to God's call. We see the signs. They start out as a whisper, and then they get louder and louder and louder. Right? It's like answering that call. Right? I think about that all the time. And then what happens? The metaphor of life, sense of humor. God has a sense of humor. I can't hear you, <laughs> the static, the frenetic energy. We move towards what? To get a clear signal. So how can we relate that to, to our life? How can we relate that to, to our life where I'm not feeling like I'm getting a clear signal because the appearance isn't something I like that I'm seeing. This is happening to me, or this is seemingly happening to me. That's no fun. And I know everybody in this room and whoever's live streaming, we're, we're in our power. We're not victims to circumstance, but we're here to remind ourselves of that. Because the appearance of 
fires in Santa Cruz and, you know, Napa and the floods in Houston and everything in Puerto Rico, like the appearance of even our macro micro appears that things are hard. They're suffering. They're struggling. But we come, we hope to come back to home base, right? Just like capture the flag. We got to touch home base every once in a while to, re, to regroup. What's important? What's my deepest intent so I know what to put my attention on? It's about alignment. So, gosh, leaking power in Chinese medicine. Um, it could mean, of course, draining energy, but second-guessing yourself, uh, low confidence, low self-esteem, self-doubt. Maybe you feel small in certain situations. Maybe you're not managing your finances well. You have weak personal boundaries in one or more of your relationships. These are the places that it shows up in our lives when we're not standing in who we are. So sometimes, or more often, we need to remind ourselves that we have the ultimate decision-making guide within us, this inner knowingness. It's helpful to think about maybe past times when your intuition was right or recall times when you ignored it and listened to, you know, well-meaning advice instead, and it didn't go well? And how often do you really listen to the advice of others when making a decision? Sometimes we need that external validation, but think of it as a consult. Same with your doctor. It's a consult, and then you take the information in, and then how does it land? Where does it land? I can't remember the movie, but at one point, someone said to someone, just stay still, just until you, spirit comes through you and then physically moves you in a direction. I love that. So alignment, I wanna speak about alignment because when you align your thoughts, your emotions, um, your actions with your highest part of yourself, that, gives you enthusiasm, that gives you purpose, that gives you meaning. So fulfilling your purpose with meaning is electrifying, right? This is the power, this is the juice, this is what makes people wonder, like, how do you do that? When I mentor um, some of my students uh, that I mentor at UCSC, I ask them, notice when people say to you, how do you do that? And if your response is, gosh, that's easy. Those are your natural resources. Those are your gifts. That is just so easy that comes through you that you're happy to give. That's energy rich. So the secret is alignment. So when you're for sure on course and doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing, fulfilling your soul's intention or your heart's desire, whatever you choose to call it, when your life is on course, on purpose, that's when you are most powerful. I mean, sure, we're going to stumble, but you're not going to fall when you're coming from that place. So I know that every challenge is an opportunity to growth. You know, we, we know that. Um, but it does provide an invaluable curriculum for you. It is uniquely designed for you because the emotional state that you're vibrating at, you're attracting those experiences. So what's interesting is that if we know this, if we are standing in our power and we're noticing the experiences that we're attracting, do we want to change or well, let's just fine tune that? Just like we fine tune our musical instruments, right? We fine tune, you know, the way that we're doing the, our muscles and when we work out. I like to call it a fine tuning, especially in my private practice. So, we know there's no mistakes. Sometimes it feels really hard and not fun. But let's reframe, let's reframe disappointments. You know, it's contrast. It's giving you the distinction of what you like or what you don't like. It's all of it. So um, have you guys seen Wonder Woman? So you know that, that power stance, right, a power pose? So what I say to some of my patients is, do you have a power pose? Right? So chiropractors, they, they talk about spinal alignment, right? To make sure your relationship with gravity is at ease, that there's less effort moving through time and space. Power poses, power stances, how you are standing really can affect your hormones and change your, your neurons. 
So I always suggest if you don't have a power pose, whatever it may be, find one so it's easily accessible for you the next time you need it. And hold it there and stay there. It's kind of like prayer. It's like prayer is a movement of consciousness, just like meditation, just like your power pose can be. Stay there as long as you need to be until you are moved. Transformation is you don't recognize yourself. You're transforming. So I love this idea of power pose because it literally affects, just like my clothes, affects the way I make decisions, ultimately. Um, yeah, in, in Six Animal Kung Fu um, is a practice I do. We, we sip a lot. So we have hand mudras, we have bows and postures. Um, but one of the things we do is we sip. So, so we sip. And I love that idea because at any moment in the bank line or any time that you're talking to a friend and you feel like they're sucking your energy, just take a sip. <laughs> take your power back, right? We give our power away to so many things, don't we? Facebook, our addictions, right? So many things. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. We're human. But why do we do it? Right? So it's interesting. It's like you have this notion that you want something in your life to change, but then you're not feeling like you have the power to do so over your own will. So the question is, how do we do this? It's easy to just stand here and talk about it. Right? So this is what I want you to try on. Play with me this week. Whether you do meditation, whether you do prayer, whether you decide just to hang out in that power stance for as long as it takes, what we need to do is if we know that the emotions are our operating system, then we need to change the vibratory state of our emotions. So how do we do that? So what I want you to do is I want you to envision and connect with your deepest intention. It could be for this week, it could be for this month, it could be for your legacy. Really connect with, you know, Stephen Levine wrote a book, A Year to Live. If you had a year to live, or you have a month to live, you know, that creates emergency, whatever that looks like for you, what would you be doing? How would you want to feel? Who would you be playing with? What would you be doing? So connect with that intention. Again, it could be very short. So you know what to focus your attention on. But when you're setting that intention, feel it. I, you, you know, so this is the thing is, this is how we make change. This is how we change habits. Changing, what is it, uh, Joe Dispenza? Break the habit of being you, because part of you isn't working, if we want to change part of that. So what I want you to do is you stay in that state of knowing and feeling already you, moving through life, moving through time and space, being that. That's changing your frequency. And by changing that emotional vibratory pattern, that operating system from which you're running, what happens? That frequency is what you're attracting, those experiences, those people, those phone calls, those connections, those opportunities. And then it becomes a little bit fun. It's kind of like you thought of someone and then they call. You know, the synchronicities, the magic of life starts to happen when you play with this emotional vibratory pattern. It's like a muscle, but you've got to play with it got to play with it. So that, that's, that's part of the way we can start to regain our power. It's part of it, part of it. So we have a business called Start With Yourself. And this notion of, in Chinese medicine, that you don't deplete your cup, very simple, we know this. You, the excess overflowing is what you give unto others. Because then it doesn't feel like it's zapping you. So starting with yourself, I believe, is the most noble place. That's, that's you know, it's kind of like what Howard Thurman and Reverend Michael and Reverend Deborah talk about, is that the world needs you to be you, to be alive radically. That's what the world needs. So, so you taking the self-responsibility to scan your life, to see the places that you need to love and held fiercely, that's your job. So by aligning our energy and getting into a feeling state of possibility, that's where possibilities exist, if that's what you want. Some call it, you know, the quantum field. Some call it the universe. But you want to align yourself with this divine flow that's already flowing because it's rightfully yours. 
It's your birthright. So the key is to emotionally embrace this vision. I believe that by the time we were seven, we've developed that personality, right? What's our personality? It's a strategy. It's our best strategy that we created to get through life. It's our winning formula. But then we get into our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and we realize some of that doesn't work for me anymore. So that's the place that I want you to connect with, right? That's the place, because ultimately, scientists, researchers, hypnotherapists, what they say is we're just replaying the same thoughts. Every day, the only reason we're staying the same is that we're having the same thoughts, but we're having the same feelings. I want to encourage you to get a little bit more dynamic in the range of emotion that you have. I um, was really moved by that piece, that song. Did you notice, and what was her name that sang? Leah. Did you notice the purity in Leah's face, in the youthfulness, the serenity, hope? So beautiful. And the message, you know, when I was listening to her, all I was feeling is the messages that were coming through that song through her. We have messages from plants, from flowers. They're from, all, they're, from, they're from the random person on the street. The more that you cultivate and develop a relationship with people, with plants, with flowers, with anything, it will reveal its secrets to you, the messages that are uniquely for you. That's what's amazing. Everybody can have the same recipe for a chocolate chip cookie, but how you uniquely make it, God, that's love. That's love, I'm interested in that. So, now that I want you to start your day from this higher state of being, because you always wanna start your day connecting with yourself. Even before, you know, it's like the idea of like opening up your eyes, you're laying in bed, doing it right before you even hit your feet to the ground. Connecting with gratitude that you woke up. Elaine just said, you woke up today. God did, you know, the universe did their part. How are you going to wake up? Because this is a co-creation. There are universal laws, nature, that we're playing with here. You can't defy nature. We saw that with the fires. We saw that with the floods. We have to be in relationship with one another. That's critical. So, when I talk about um, leaking, in Chinese medicine, we have this diagnosis called phlegm misting the head. It's like fogginess. And it's really interesting because that fogginess gets away of the alignment, the energy running through. It's kind of like adjusting the knob on the radio dial. You want to get really clear. Think about the last time you hit a dead zone with your cell phone or the internet was slow. I want you to relate that to you also listening. Listening to the messages coming through you, your God, what your soul is saying to you. And if the messages are not clear, then how, what, you know, what's going to really get you there? It might be a hot bath. You know, again, it might be sitting in meditation, doing a retreat, eating some warmed kale. Right? You decide what's going what's to get, get it to you. But we're so, we're so used to, in 2017, this instantaneous connection with everything. I mean, cell phones, text messages. I mean, we know more about what's going on with everyone else than ourselves. I mean, it's really interesting. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of a cosmic, like, hmm, why is this happening? You know? I think about that. But what it translates to is an incoherent signal. You know, you're so foggy, there's too much static, you can't see, and the basic communication that we used to have is resulting to a corresponding vibration. So if that's true, just like your health, proximity is power. Just like I said, you move your cell phone close to that tower, 
Proximity is power. I think about the people that we hang out with. You know, I think about the foods that we eat. If everything is a life force, if everything is vibrating, we are consciously and subconsciously vibrating with everything around us. That's why the feng shui part of Chinese medicine is thinking about all these things, all these material things that we're in relationship with, that they're vibrating. You know, the sweater that you spent too much money on that you don't wear, or the present that you got from Aunt who knows who that you don't really ever want, right? I love that lens because it's simple. It's simple. It's, 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 it's finding how can I be in harmony with my own nature, which is your bedroom, your home, but also the laws of nature, the sun and the moon and the tides, and then, of course, with, with each other. So the only job is, of course, to be your true self, not the habits of you, which, which allow you to be misaligned with your purpose, but you have a destiny. You have a gift, and you want to find grace in the work of you becoming you, in the highest expression of yourself. So do you care to take a guess of what the dominant, what was the dominant factor in 96% um, of the participants who tried to change a behavior but didn't? They did a study of 10,000 people, and only 4% of the population could actually make use of their will, their power, their drive as a force to change behavior. The 96% of the other people, they didn't change because of environment. That's why I was brought in feng shui. So what do I mean by that? What's your environment? Well, it's the music you're listening to and the news. And of course, you know, I just said the people you're hanging out with. But it's all of it. Environment can mean a lot of different things. So the best thing I can say, because I, I do fitness in the morning, is I tell people when it's really hard to get up, right now it's dark at 6 in the morning. So what do you do? Well, change your environment. You put your alarm clock across the room, right? <laughs> but or, you know, a patient that doesn't take supplements. Well, put them right next to the computer. You have technology. You have a $1,000 iPhone. Set an alarm. <laughs> take your vitamins. <laughs> But it's also about moving through your time and space. Notice your home, notice your job, notice your car, notice how you're moving through your life, and is it flow, right? Your environment is informing you. You're in relationship with it, whether you're conscious of it or not. It's either gonna raise you up or leak energy. You know, I'm a full-time student right now, writing you know, a 50-page paper for my capstone that's due in, in nine days. And it's interesting because suddenly I just want to clean the house, <laughs> right? But, but a clear space is a clear mind, right? And I make joke, but it's true. This is the year of the fire peacock. It's about beautification, beautification. Because when you're inspired by beauty, I mean, we go out to nature and out, out to Westcliff, but when you're in a home that's beautiful, why are we drawn to that? We're drawn to simplicity. It's kind of like the modern home. You know, it's, it's clean. It's inspiring. So I want you to notice your environment, that you're in relationship with it. Look at it with a new lens. You know, I always say to myself, when I'm taking myself so seriously and I'm so in the habit of being me and it's not working, what do I do? Well, I talk in a British accent. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's like if you're really wanting to change a part of you, then change it up. You know? Could be a new haircut. Could be taking on a new accent. You know? I mean, it, it really could be anything. I mean, I like to go to Elf a lot, where you just sing everything that you're thinking. I don't like what I'm thinking. You know, you just, I mean, anything you can do to get yourself out of it. Get yourself out of the seriousness. If you're serious, get funny. If you're funny, get serious. It's like, however you want to do it. But your environment is really, really, gosh, really 
a, it, you're in relationship with it, and I've really seen it. And, we're, and many of us are so victims to our environment that we use it as an excuse to give up on change. But what if instead we used our willpower to change our behavior and design our environments in such a way that it naturally causes us to be pulled towards the highest ideal of ourself? That's what I'm interested in. I mean, this is creating lifetime, life, lifestyle and design by um, design, sorry, creating your life by design, not by default. So design not only the exterior, but the interior, right, of our lives, because these environments really do reflect your values, your beliefs. I mean, as you all know, these conscious things, these unconscious things, they're motivating us. So if we don't know our values and beliefs, and then we're not in tune with them, even the strong of us are gonna go back to our old, old patterns, you know, in six months. I was talking the other night with some friends and we said, you know, we could have a new gym. January 1st, first two weeks, it's a gym, second two weeks, it's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because, not to promote alcohol, but to promote the idea that, you know, why do we fall off the wagon? You know, really, what part of you is getting in the way from staying so committed to you, living your life to its fullest? I mean, this is the inquiry. Mm. So beliefs are feelings of certainty, certainty that we've acquired through past experiences, which, you know, we've proven ourselves to be true, that drive our behavior. But I want to decide how I want to live. I want to design my environment with those accords. You know, designing the exterior of your life to mirror the interior is going to really help you put the you in the person that you strive to be. So to accomplish this, I really want you to look at the corners of your life. And when you look at these environments, you know, is it increasing my energy? Is it decreasing? Is it pulling me up, pulling me down? Same with people. And as you start to redesign these environments, you're going to start to see that everything changes. By the mere fact that we're aligning these environments to our beliefs, to our values, we're changing the frequency of the outcome that we want to achieve. So the difference is, you know, between reminding ourselves of our, you know, predictable past, um, and, you know, somewhat entertaining ourselves to the possibility of this new future. You know, it's bringing this idea of something from the immaterial world of thought and possibility to the physical world of senses. The subconscious mind is its own environment. It's a garden. It's truly a garden. And when you meditate, when you pray, when you do whatever you do, you're reprogramming it. You know, we're, we're not using the trio anymore. We are upgrading our hardware, we're upgrading our software. You know this, this is the time that we're living in right now. So what this means is, is that if you can master the emotions and change that emotional state and start vibrating frequency and your cells are spinning, then you can master anything because you're in a supportive environment and that is the golden key. So remember, I, I wasn't alive in 1954, but Back then, they said that the four-minute mile was impossible. And then, a Caucasian, Roger Bannister, did it. Right? So I think about that. It's like I think about, why do we limit ourselves? Why do we think that things are impossible? We're talking about power. We're talking about doing whatever we need to do to clean up the leaks, to be an open vessel for the infinite power that's just everywhere. But somehow, we think we can do it better and, and then ask ourselves, it's not the how, it's not our job. Our only job is to really stay in the flow. So whatever's coming through us, that, I mean, that's how creative and as being an artist of being a human being is. So, a simple example of exercising your power is by changing habits. You, we know this. We've put it to the test. Sometimes we've succeeded, and sometimes we've failed. And why do we fail? We have inner competing desires. So if that's the case, 
because we have these two inner competing desires, it zaps. It zaps us. So your ability to focus your attention is a way to navigate through these conflicting desires. So one of the most effective ways is to get rid of the habits that zap your energy. So you do have to scan your life this week. Where are, are there activities, are there people, are there things that you're doing that you can leverage or let go of? See, the thing is, is that you need to gain a reserve of power to draw, draw from if you're really wanting to change a habit, right? You really do, you need to, it's kind of like revving up to go up that hill. Pacific Heights in a stick shift, right? You gotta, you gotta get some, some energy, some juice behind that, right? Or like, I'm gonna go on a cleanse. Okay, I gotta prepare. Like, I gotta like mentally like think, all right, I'm gonna take out caffeine and sugar. Same. So take your life, take a look. Where, where, where are you leaking? Doesn't have to be forever. Just in this moment, just in this week. And take it back. Say yes to yourself. What are you saying yes to? What are you saying no to? How are you naming things? There's a running commentary, even right now. So if that's the case, <laughs> I invite you to really sit back that power for yourself so then you can give more because that's all that you want. Right? We are a life of service. And if everyone, mm, if everyone just shows the glory of them to one another, that's a world that I want to live in. So I want you to gain that reserve and I want you to focus your attention on a new habit. Yeah, think about that. Think about the new habit. The new part of you that wants to come out that maybe has never been expressed before. So I think, it's, I think there's urgency. I think there's urgency to become active participants in this world. Um, in our, what we want in our homes, what we want in our life, your legacy, our communities. Um, there, there's urgency to develop your trust, this inner knowingness, this inner guide, to transcend from your addictions of accumulation, your addictions of information, to your thoughts, to your feelings. I want you to ask yourself, how can you leverage mindfulness and awareness to live a healthier, more life that's fully actualized? So as a Taoist, I encourage each of us to embrace seasonal rhythms, to live in better accord with the laws of nature. It informs us. So we're in the season of autumn, and it's the season of letting go. And the idea is that you're supposed to let go of anything that doesn't serve your highest good. So we, we talked about this. That could be, again, things, people, programming, thoughts, beliefs, experiences, friends, anything that doesn't really serve you. So the autumn is associated with the metal element. So we always say to our patients in this time, hold your sword high, it's metal. Be fierce and fearless, because this is, a, is the season of becoming a master at clear cutting um, boundaries. Metal is the controller. So the controller in you, the director, how are you conducting? That's staying in your power. So it's your job right now in the metal element to release you from the habitual to open the door to the new. That's what I was feeling with Leah, the purity, the awareness, the consciousness. It's palpable. So the paired organs, not to get too clinical, but it's the lung and large intestine. So with the lungs, what do we do? We inhale purity, right? Pure oxygen, right? Through breathing in our lungs. They serve as a bridge to the conscious and the unconscious. You are literally through oxygen and air giving this body temple life. So this keeps us alive without even thought. Can you imagine if we had to control all those things that happen with this body? Those are the things you don't need to have control over. That's what's amazing to me. So through taking breaths, you know, through bringing in a meditative mind, you're going to still your heart. It's going to bring forth an authentic perception of reality. So in Chinese medicine, every organ 
is associated with emotions. And I want to end with that the emotion of the lungs is sadness and grief. So it's also about loss. We, we usually lose people um, and animals at this time. They let go of the physical. So the lungs are associated with clear thinking and communication, so it's the openness to the idea of a new self-image with the ability to relax, to let go, to be happy. But when the lungs are out of balance, when the metal is out of balance, or you're, ex you're experiencing excessive grief, you're going to have difficulty coping with loss or coping with change. We sometimes feel a sense of alienation, um, and, and when you have prolonged sadness that doesn't dissipate, then the lungs start to accumulate and start to become deficient. So because lungs are associated with attachment, we sometimes have a hard time letting go, letting go of people, of change. We, we, we actually spend time reliving the past. This can all point to a deficient lung system. So we speak about qi in Chinese medicine, and when the qi of the lungs are weak, you can sometimes experience an overwhelming state of grief that just doesn't ease. And if you don't strengthen this deficiency and it gets prolonged, it can lead to depression and other issues. So I bring this up to also speak of contrast. Because grief that is expressed fully and that is resolved is strengthening both physically and psychologically. So remember, your job is just to feel whatever you're feeling, not to judge what you're feeling. Meet yourself where you are. Hold yourself fiercely. So when you're doing this, you're not avoiding grief. You're rather dealing with it in a healthy way to maintain all aspects of life. It's our ability Gosh, right now, think about it. It's our ability to see even the bitter harvest of cutting sadness and deep grief with, you know, it has its oppression and isolation this time of year, but we don't drown in it. We accept it so we can embrace and move on. Just as, as the tides turn and move on, we do without a backward glance this season. So autumn, remember in September, it was so rich in its beginning, but it's becoming stark, you know, as we move to the solstice. But the perfect metaphor for celebrating ease and abundance is not shying away from the hard and grim through facing and understanding disconnection is that we are reconnected, and the reconnection is the healing. Reconnection. That's, you notice the autumn light, things start to slow down energetically, we start to go within, that is the, the place. We are being ushered by the laws of elements to create some stillness to reconnect with, reconnect with the places that we're disconnected from. So, your optional assignment is to start your day getting connected with yourself, get into connected with a vibratory state, an emotional state that you want to feel. And if you don't know what emotional state you want to feel, Google them. Take a look at the list. Pick one. Pick, pick an emotional state that you want to feel. And then you use your breath because we're in the autumn. Use your breath to access the most conscious and part of yourself that's the highest state. Find your power pose. Use it when you need it this week. And most of all, Participate in the activities that are energy rich, that give you life. Become alive, because that is what the world needs. So I thank you so much for allowing me to speak with you today. And I want to solidify these words in power by, if you choose to, I want you to stand in your power pose. You can sit in a power pose. Could be anything at all. But I do want you to join me in closing your eyes, bringing some stillness, and let's take a breath together. You can also put your hand over your heart. Hmm. So I'm knowing in this moment that there's only one of us here. 
There's only one source resourcing itself through us, as us, individually, as an expression of our highest good, uniquely as you. I'm so grateful today that we are, like Elaine said, we woke up. We woke up to the call to be here in this moment to reconnect with ourself. God, I think this universe, we are alive at such a time as this because, yes, we are the ones we have been waiting for. You are the one that you have been waiting for. I want you to become crazy in love with yourself. I want you to become your best friend. I want you to give you what you need. Create this sense of urgency because, yes, it is time to answer the call to take sips of your power. You have accessibility in any moment to redirect, to reframe. Mm, God, I'm knowing in this moment that, that through the appearance of nature and the laws and suffering, that there is good. There is good happening, and I want to expand the possibility that when we are being the you that meant to be, that we come together with this idea of oneness. I thank Inner Light. I thank Reverend Deborah. I thank each and every one of us out in the ethers, no matter where we are on the planet, that all needs are met that we are held, that we are beyond our circumstance, knowing the truth about who we are, not our stuff, not our circumstances, not the appearances, that when we distill, when we find stillness and can listen crystal clear to the inner knowingness mm, and get in touch with that divine flow coming through us, we know we rest in our minds. We find peace in our hearts, knowing that love is all around. So we say yes to today. We say yes to ourselves. We say yes to this life, mm, knowing that it is good. It is palpable. Mm. And we live our lives in the seasons of change, embrace the autumn light as it ushers in this reflection so we can see exactly what we need to see. So we can change this vibratory pattern, this emotional state, so we can feel the feelings that we just want to feel. It is our birthright. Mm. So I say yes. I say yes to you. I say yes to getting out of the way and know that we are truly well. And I thank you, God, with me. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Amen.